For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, you're watching People's Dispatch. Today we hear from South Africa, where the countries where workers of the country's largest and oldest dairy sector employer, that's Clover, are on strike. Now the workers' strike has entered its second month. There have been a lot of rounds of negotiations, but the government has not accepted the demands, and the workers are determined that they will continue their protest until these demands are met. To know more about these demands as well as the nature of the protest, we have with us we, we have with us John Apollis, who is the general secretary of Jivusa. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes. So first of all, I just wanted to ask you about the strike itself. There are about 5,000 workers involved here. This is the second month that the strike has been going on. So what are the key labor issues that have really caused the strike? The, the key issues are one, the massive uh, job losses uh, that was affected by Clover SA and, uh, and Milko. Uh, at the end of July uh, this year, they retrench, uh, cut about uh, 843 jobs. At the end of November, they cut uh, 874 jobs, and they are planning to cut another 812 jobs uh, in February 2022. So uh, one of the key demands of the strike is that the company must stop these job, uh, job cuts and uh, take back and reinstate uh, those workers that they have uh, dismissed through the process of, uh, of retrenchment. The second key issue is the cuts in the salaries. The company has imposed a unilateral cut in the salaries of, of, of workers to the tune of 20%. Uh, in fact, this has also led to the retrenchment of workers because they are saying that if you do not accept the 20% cut in your salaries, then you will be retrenched. And uh, many of the workers, uh, especially the 874 workers have rejected the 20% cut in their salaries. Hence, they were then dismissed retrenched at the end of uh, November. The third issue is the issue of what we call austerity measures. Here, the company is uh, forcing workers to work on a Saturday and a Sunday, as well as public holidays. Now, in South Africa, we have about uh, 10 uh, paid public holidays where workers are, are, are supposed to be off on those particular days and get paid for being uh, off on, on, on the public holidays. So the company is forcing them to work on those particular uh, public holidays. They are also cutting the transport allowance. There are workers who work uh, night shift and they get a transport allowance and the company wants to cut it by uh, 50%. Then the other issue is the issue of what they call the permanent short time. In other words, uh, when there's a slack in demand uh, for the for the goods, uh, orders are down. They want to have the right to inform the worker not to come to work uh, because there are no orders, there are no products to to to, de to deliver to the various retailers, and then they want to have a situation where they don't have to pay. Uh, those particular workers. And these workers are permanent workers. They're supposed to have guaranteed uh, working hours per week and, and per month. So they want to now uh, uh, acquire this right to, to inform permanent workers not to come to work, put them on, on short time and not uh, be able to, to, to pay them. And then there's uh, the last issue, which is one of the major issues is uh, what uh, we called a, a, a working operation where Currently, uh, when workers do deliveries of the dairy products to the different retailers, um, the driver has two van assistants, two assistants in the truck with him, because, I mean, they, they deliver huge uh, tons of products to the different retailers, especially the major retailers in our, uh, in our country. Now, the com company wants to do away with the two van assistants and want to impose one van assistant. That means that the driver must now, in addition to driving the trucks and be responsible for the products, must also do uh, a delivery, picking of orders on the truck and also offloading and also uh, taking the products into the, into the retailers. Now, and sorry, the last one is the, what we call a, they want to impose a compressed working week where they want to change the ordering, uh, ordering hours from nine hours to 12 hours. Now you can see combined with the, this uh, scrapping of the two van assistant uh, system and a 12 hour 
hour a day uh, shift work, clearly you can see the workload uh, and on the workers is gonna, gonna, gonna intensify. Uh, so those are the issues that, uh, that our members are, are striking and we are, our demands are clear. One, that the company must stop the job, uh, job cuts, reinstate those workers, uh, stop the, the salary cuts, and also withdraw all these uh, austerity measures, as we call them, uh, in, our, in, our, in our propaganda, in our agitation. Uh, so those are the issues that, uh, that, that has led to the, to the strike uh, from the 22nd of November uh, this year. Absolutely. Just quickly to follow up, has the, uh, has the company responded to any of these demands at all in any, in any manner? In fact, we have been in uh, negotiation, negotiations with them for about four months. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, the problem that we had is that every time we ha have a meeting with the company, they increase the numbers of, of, the, of the job cuts. Uh, they start out with maybe 200 and then the next meeting say no, because they are doing uh, certain calculations, the numbers increase, et cetera, et cetera. So they have not moved one inch uh, from the from the, from their position, the only only issue that they sort of uh, uh, compromise on was the issue of the uh, uh, reinstatement of of certain numbers of workers. They are saying that they are prepared to take back seven hundred and sixty three workers, uh, but these workers must accept the twenty percent wage cuts. They must also accept all these other uh, changes in the operations and the conditions of employment which our members are not prepared to, to, to accede to. Now, uh, what, what's important to, 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 to understand here is that the company is embarking on this uh, major onslaught against workers' uh, uh, wages and jobs and their living standards, because they told us that in order to restore their levels of pro profitability, they need to cut labor costs by 300 million rand uh, per annum. So they have set themselves that particular target, you know, of saving uh, cost, the labor cost of the, to the tune of, of 300 million rand. And hence they are now doing, implementing all these different measures to achieve that particular particular target. So really clearly, uh, I mean, they, they, they have made up their mind that they want to achieve a certain rate of return on investment of, of, of their shareholders. And therefore the workers have to carry uh, the, the, the burden of, of, of achieving that level of profitability. Absolutely. Right. And in this context, of course, it's not only the workers of Clover who might be affected, but also the larger dairy sector and farmers as well. So could you maybe also talk about how these plans might affect them? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 in fact, as, as you correctly say, Clover is the, is the biggest dairy uh, producer and distributor of, of dairy products in our, in our country. And they have a, a, a network of farmers uh, from 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 who they are uh, acquiring their the milk, so clearly the the, the the strike is having an impact on those particular farmers because milk is there is a big problem with the delivery of milk. And secondly, also the consumer, the consumers, uh, we have launched a national boycott uh, of of clover products. We have called on the public and uh, and the communities not to uh, buy the products of of clover. As you can see behind me, we do have a poster calling on the public to, to boycott uh, Clover products. Uh, we have uh, uh, produced many pamphlets and stickers uh, that we uh, sort of stick on the products. We get uh, teams of people, squads of people to go to the supermarkets, the retail shops, and they stick these uh, boycott stickers on the products of, of, of Clover. In that sense, we're also kind of uh, popularizing the, the, the boycott of Clover products. Right. And in this context, of course, quickly wanted to check before going into the international aspect, what has been the government's response? Because I think one of the demands has been that Clover should be nationalized as well. So how is the government engaged with the union? Well, I mean, the govern government has not really responded. Uh, in fact, we wrote a letter to, to the Minister of Trade and Industry uh, because uh, 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 enterprises, especially enterprises, who have undertaken merge, uh, particular mergers uh, fall under the, 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 the sphere of, of, of the Minister of Trade and Industry. So we wrote a letter towards the end of November requesting a meeting uh, with, the, with the minister. We only got a response, uh, not directly from the minister, but one of the, uh, the, the public servants, the Deputy Director General, uh, 
uh, in the Department of uh, Competition uh, Policy and Economic Planning. Uh, we met with her on two occasions now, last week, Thursday, and, and this Tuesday. In the first meeting, she wanted a uh, wanted the details of, uh, of what are the developments at Clover, uh, because she was indicating she must uh, develop a, a briefing document uh, for the minister. We then provided her with all the information. And then on, my, on Tuesday, when we got the feedback from her, she, all she said was that uh, she uh, gave the briefing to the minister, he asked a couple of questions, but he did not give her any indication whether he is prepared to meet with us or intervene uh, in, the, in, the, in this particular uh, dispute and, and strike that is currently on, uh, I mean, uh, in, in place. In fact, we are, not, uh, we are not surprised by the lack of response and lack of interest on the part of the, of the minister and the government as a whole. Because uh, for the past 20 years, the ANC government has uh, uh, what's it, pursued a new liberal uh, economic program where they put uh, at the center the, the interests of the pri private sector, capitalist enterprises. In fact, that for them, I mean, the economic development and development in a country will be premised on the private sector, uh, creating economic growth. And we all know that economic, economic growth means uh, making more profits uh, for, for employers, for the, for the capitalists. So they don't want to uh, what's it, uh, upset uh, 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 the, the employers, the capitalists. So therefore they are kind of dragging their feet to intervene because for us, uh, what's important here is that uh, Clover was uh, taken over by a Israeli-based uh, company called Central Bottling Company uh, in 2019. Uh, they paid out the, the shareholders to, to the tune of 4, I think 2 billion rand, and they became then the major shareholder of, of Clover. Uh, we opposed the, 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 the merger as, as unions uh, and also with the Palestinian Solidarity uh, Organization in South Africa, we made a submission to the, what we call the, uh, the Competition Commission uh, that has the right to determine whether a merger must go ahead or not. We made the submission, raised all the problems of the fact that the CBC, the Central Bottling, Bottling Company, is a company that is operating in the occupied uh, territories of Palestine and is very complicit in the, in the violation of human rights and the oppression of the Palestinian people. In fact, uh, the Palestinian solidarity groups assisted us in doing research on the CBC and they found a whole range of uh, of violations and anti-worker and anti-human rights uh, uh, practices on the part of, of, of CBC. In fact, they operate in the Gulen Heights and also in parts of the, of the West Bank. Right. Uh, they also have a, a, a dairy uh, that they have in, in Israel. They also have a beverage company. So we then indicated to the, to the Competition Commission and to the government that uh, the takeover by CBC First of all, is in violation of the international law because of the, of the fact that this company is operating in the occupied territories. Secondly, that um, CBC, uh, what is takeover? Is, uh, this takeover is going to lead to ma a major process of rationalization and reorganization, restructuring. This is not going to lead to job creation or development of, 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 the, of the local manufacturing capacity here in the, in the country. And this is what is playing out now. I mean, uh, uh, besides now the, the, the job losses and, uh, and, uh, and the tax on workers' wages, Clover is also shutting down its inland uh, production facilities. Uh, they claim they are shifting it to the coastal areas, uh, you know, like uh, Durban, which is one of the coastal uh, areas, and in Port Elizabeth, another coastal areas. But from from our perspective, we kind of uh, uh, are, are, are saying that this is really to prepare Clover to become a distribution network for the products of, of CBC, because they are putting uh, Clover at 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 key. Uh, harbor ports, you know, in our in our countries, and uh, we know CBC is is a, is a major player also in the dairy industry in uh, in the Middle East and also in the beverages, right. which is where Clover is also operating within the markets. Mm -hmm. So, and therefore Clover will become for us a destination for the products of of of, of CBC. 
and they're going to scale down the, its uh, Clover's manufacturing capacity and turn it into a major distribution network for the products of, of, of Israel. So that's how, that's how we kind of analyze the, 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 the situation. And therefore, the, the ANC government, although it pays lip service to the support of the struggle and liberation of the Palestinian, uh, Palestinian people, but when it comes down to it, when it comes to taking real action, right. you can see the ANC government runs away from, from actually doing anything substantial and concrete to assist uh, the Palestinian people. And therefore, we are not surprised by the, the lack of response or interest on the part of the Minister of Trade and Industry in the issues that, uh, that workers are facing, as well as the Palestinian people. Absolutely. And finally, quickly, how do you see the strike action continuing in the coming weeks as well? considering the response well the we are organizing a major uh, a mass rally uh, on the 8th of, of of january we are inviting and calling all organizations and progressive individuals uh, we are doing it together with the palestinian uh, support committee uh, support organizations like the bds uh, the palestinian solidarity alliance the palestinian solidarity campaign as well as SAFTU, that is uh, one of the trade union federations, right. and with FAO, is the other union that is also part of this of the strike. So we're call, calling a major mass meeting where we're going to kind of strategize in terms of, of how do we can intensify the struggle against Clover. We're also planning a major march to the offices of the Minister of Trade and Industry on the 13th of January, so that we can highlight the call for, a, for, for the disinvestment of right. CBC from, uh, from South Africa. Thank you so much for talking to us. Okay, thank you very much for having me. That's all your time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch.